Hello everyone, and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. So, as we said last week, this week we are reviewing a, another awesome YouTuber's Whiskey of the Year. So, Andy at Maltbox, who has good opinions and everything, uh, gave this, the Compass Box Orchard House, his Whiskey of the Year. You'll hear I'm going to pronounce Orchard quite intensely, because for weeks I've been calling it Orchid House, but it's Orchard House. Uh, this is another blended malt from the Compass Box Whiskey Company. They did insanely well, like the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. In general, the feel for Compass Box is just all positive. Um, we did a video last year on the Hedonism Felicitas, uh, which was a delicious old blended grain whiskey. I thought it was a little bit too expensive, um, but it was a limited edition. It's nearly killed now at home, that bottle, and it is more buttery and delicious than ever before. But I still thought their prices were creeping up just a little bit. This doesn't have the problem with that because I paid £46 uh, and £5 of that was shipping costs, so it's only £41 a bottle. Andy's gone through three. This is my first. And it does exactly what the label would think it would be. So in terms of the recipe and the bones of this stuff, if you do go onto Compass Box's website, they will tell you what is exactly in it with this beautiful little kind of pie chart. Um, I've managed to remember all of it, not the percentages, well, one percentage, because I thought it was quite funny, but most of the contents of this come from Linkwood, Ben Rennes, and Klein Leash. Three very good distilleries in their own right, single cask whiskies, mostly where you see them now, um, but their standardized bottles in the Flora and Fauna range are also delicious. I'm trying to get hold of Linkwood 12 for ages. Um, I digress, I will find one. 2% of this whiskey comes from Kalila. And when I was trying this at home, the first night I opened it, I was like, I'm sure there's a bit of smoke in the back of this. And nonetheless, I was proven right. 2% of the whole makeup is Kalila. A certain percentage of it is their own Highland blended malt. And we know that John Glazer loves Klein Leash, so that's probably more Klein Leash, but it's probably been blended with something else in their own casks. And then the final part is a distillery near Abalore. So that could be Abalore, or it could be Craig Ellicke, or it could be Macallan. Um, my nose is very itchy, do apologize. If anyone can correct me, I'm pretty sure Glenn Farkless is quite close to Abalore as well. Abalour, sorry. But yeah, so it's made up of some very unique ingredients. And the label is incredible looking, as it is with all Compass Box products. 46%, natural color, non-chill filtered. All the stuff most people look for these days. But yeah, I was quite excited about this. It was bottled in 20th of July last year, this one. Uh, it's batch number 321-02BB. That's B for Barry. So if you want to check that out, feel free to. But let's smell it, let's taste it. Um, this label is very indicative of the whiskies that I tend to enjoy. Bright, citrus driven, very fruity. But let's see if all of the ingredients add up and create that. So yeah, the initial smell is full of apple, pear, and like some banana skin notes. Imagine a really fresh bowl of fruit, walking down to the kitchen, you just kind of see it there, bite into it, very juicy, very ripe flavors. There's a slight kind of black berry note in there too. And then the stuff I always get with Compass Box products, it's like vanilla, icing sugar. There's a slight honeyed thing in there too. But those three tend to like go together quite well. And one thing Andy said in his video, um, I, tried to not, I tried to not watch other YouTubers' videos if I'm reviewing a similar product because I don't want like my mind to be swayed. But Andy loved this stuff, so I had to watch the video. And he said it didn't have any like sour notes in it. Um, just goes to show everyone's nose and palates are slightly different. I think it does have a slight sour note in it, but not in a bad way. One of my favorite flavors in the world is like sour apple, like sour green stuff. Um, it's that refreshing yet kind of bitter element. And for me, maybe it's not sour, maybe the word is like tangy, but there is like a tanginess, but I suppose you just get that with kind of green apple flavors anyway. But for me, that does linger in the background along with all of these beautiful kind of custardy powdered sugar dessert fruit notes. Recently went to a very nice restaurant and ordered for a dessert like a, a, a pear that had been poached in like white wine. 
and there is an element of that to this. Um, getting more into wine, turning into like a Chardonnay fan, and again, there are some kind of like top acidic notes in this that you get from some of the Chardonnay I've tried. So it smells enticing, it smells delightful, it smells very bright and very summery. Um, I've had this neat a few times and it's been delicious, but I will probably be making like highballs and stuff with this in summer and spring because I bet it is absolutely incredible with like the correct garnish and peach bitters and stuff. But let's taste it, let's see where the money is, and then we'll score it. Ooh, okay. When I've tried it at home, it hasn't been as kind of open as this. So, the arrival is the smell. Bright fruit, slightly custardy, and there's almost like a biscuity quality to it. Like, um, I think custard cream biscuits, that sort of thing, with loads of fresh fruit. I believe, if I remember the graph correctly, the majority ingredients of this are Klein Leash and Linkwood. I think they took up the largest sections. Now, Klein Leash, we all love Klein Leash. I'm not gonna use the word waxy apart from them, but that warm, slightly salty thing Klein Leash has, there's a lot of that. There's a huge hit of maltiness. Well, that biscuit thing is building and building and building. That for me, quite reminiscent of, of Ben Rinnis as well, but also of Linkwood. Linkwood for me on, as a whiskey is like quite malty and quite ginger driven. Those two flavors in particular come to mind with Linkwood and tropical fruit. Ben Rennes is a weird one. I've had sherry cask influenced stuff, bourbon influenced stuff, port influenced stuff. It always tastes different every time Ben Rennes, so I can't really pick those notes, those notes out in there. The Kalila is so light. It's just on the backdraft of everything. That little, tiny little wisp of smoke, which actually backs up the salt from the Klein Leash. Very unique. The distillery near Abalore thing, no idea. I don't taste anything sherried in it. I'm pretty sure this is all ex-bourbon. And... That Highland blended malt, again, I'm pretty sure there's some Klein Leash in their own Highland blended malt style. And again, it just kind of influences that richer, fuller, oily texture of Klein Leash without being heavily peated or even mildly peated, really. Let's do round two. Yeah, like the, the label and the name, it's all about the smell. The Orchard House smell is incredible. The taste is all about these very powerful, um, I call them class A1 whiskies. Things like Linkwood, Ben Rennes, Klein Leash, Glendullen. Uh, these whiskies, which are owned by very large companies to use in blends because they provide very, very intense flavor profiles. Not dominant, but intense. You can tell it's a certain distillery. The taste of fresh fruit is on the arrival, but my God, like that malty, salty thing is there. Um, the finish does have a, an era of, an era, an air, yeah, an air, that's better. An air of youth about it. It's slightly spirit driven. Don't mind that, it's fine, but it is there. But again, a malty thing. They probably should have called it Malt House rather than Orchard House because it is such a biscuity, delicious whiskey. And it's 40 quid. So if you, don't, if you can pick this up locally, you don't have to pay shipping. It's like 40, 41 pounds. It's amazing. I do wish there was more of the fruit thing on the palate because I love tropical fruit driven whiskies, orchard fruit whiskies. One of the reasons I used to love Hakshu because that's all it tasted of, along with like cucumber and mint and stuff like that. Um, it is a lovely whiskey. I probably will buy another bottle of it. I think overall I'm going to score it like an eight and a half. I do like it. Don't think I like it as much as Andy likes it. That's not a problem. We're all different. Um, yeah, if, if that fruit thing was just a little bit more on the taste, it'd get a bigger score and I'd probably buy another bottle straight away. Um, this has made it into a category of like, not my everyday whiskies. 
because um, I think we probably shouldn't use that phrase, but common drinkers. I think that's slightly better, somehow. Might be offensive to some people, but it's kind of a common drinking bottle. Um, the batches will vary, I'm sure. Compass Box's website will tell you what's in your batch because they're very good like that, they're very transparent. Um, but yeah, along with things like Johnny Walker Black Label, um, Lot 40 Rye from Canada, like those two for me, solid every day, solid common drinkers. Um, this has made it into that tier, because Spice Tree used to be in there. But I don't think I've ever reviewed Spice Tree because it was something that so many people have reviewed. But this is really nice, I think you should pick it up. If you like Clang Leash and Linkwood, you should pick this up. I do, which is one of the reasons I bought it, and I will be buying another. Um, but yeah, I give that a solid eight and a half. That is really nice whiskey. I just wish the orchard thing was bigger on the palate. Maybe it will be the longer it's open. Um, but I've linked Andy's video below, so please do go and check that out too, because he is a wonderful reviewer. Uh, but yeah, that is the Compass Box Orchard House. This is Whiskey Wednesday, and I'll see you all next week. Cheers.